Hey YouTube, um, just a couple of points of interest today. Well, one of them was sent to me by a subscriber, and the other one is something I found on Something Awful. Um, I'm not being vague, Something Awful is a website. The first one is, um, a new computer chip that was developed and recently released by IBM, and, um, basically it's just one step in an attempt to make a chip that acts more like a human brain that is able to learn and um, make decisions based on various sensors as opposed to um, the old model which basically acts like a calculator. It's, it's kinda neat because um, finally, I mean, there have been a lot of attempts um, such as the Blue Brain Project that I mentioned probably quite a while ago to make a chip that acts more like a human brain but um, the style of processing is just much different and basically one of the main roadblocks is that um, computers that mimic human brains are um, not consistently accurate and one of the reasons that computers um, use so much power is to guarantee the threshold between a zero and a one is met so that um, the signal is pow powerful enough to um, definitely be a one as opposed to a zero. So basically the version that they just released is very tiny but it does have learning sensors and um, I believe it's been able to decode visual information so far and um, perform tasks that normally only people can perform which is actually much more exciting than just being able to win a chess tournament. Their project is called Synapse which is short for Systems of Neuromorphic Adaptive Plastic Scalable Electronics and <laughs> I kind of wonder how long it took them to figure out like a word for each of the letters. <laughs> How late did they stay up? So when I was reading the article um, it listed possible applications such as um, having sensors in the ocean to be able to detect an, uh, po a possible tsunami or to have sensors next to the vegetables in a grocery store to um, notify the people working there whether vegetables are fresh and whether the lettuce is wilting and um, the possible uses actually kind of surprised me because um, we already have technology that can do that so why would they list that in the article and why is it so blithely utilitarian I can't help but think that technology like this would be used to um, track m like macro scale uh, consumer trends and detect patterns that humans um, aren't able to detect. You know, it could be in grocery stores, but it could track who exactly buys cinnamon flavored toothpaste. The answer is nobody because it's gross. What's the most attractive way to package potato chips for frat boys? words like attractive and package. It's a little silly to imagine that in a capitalist society that technology like this isn't going to be used to get deeper into the human mind to figure out how to sell it things. Um, but you know here I am going off on a tangent. The chip is just one step in the journey to creating artificial intelligence. It's just hard to admit that we're losing more and more privacy as we speak, you know, like, oh, they'll never put that kind of technology in grocery stores, or, you know, just like, nobody will ever find that post you made in the Irritable Bowel Syndrome Forum six months ago. They will find it if they really want to. My other um, point of interest is a new um, drug that's being developed by MIT, and um, this is also in process, but 
it's been able to wipe out, wipe out every virus that they've tried it against, um, including the common cold, influenza, um, what else? Let me see if I can find it. Polio, um, and a stomach virus, and pretty much every other virus that they tested against. Um, it's called Draco, <laughs> another brilliant acronym. I actually like the acronym Draco because it's... It reminds me of a dragon, which is kind of badass. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert, but let me read you um, what it does. Basically, it um, triggers the, the infected cell to commit suicide so that it can't replicate, and it does this fairly early on, um, so it eliminates the virus before it can start to spread throughout the body. It says the end result is a drug called Draco for double-stranded RNA activated caspase oligomerizers. <laughs> when one end of Draco binds to DS RNA, it signals the other end of Draco to initiate apoptosis, killing cells before the virus has a chance to replicate. In the article it said that the inventor wasn't that concerned with whether it could help with AIDS or HIV because um, there were already drugs for that but I'm pretty sure none of them actually eliminate the virus um, but yeah the creator's a little bit more concerned with things that don't currently have cures like common cold so it's pretty big news um, I will put a link in the description so that's about it um, thanks for listening and uh, let me know what you think of all this